You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, I am the chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and I am doing this on volunteer unpaid time. I have in with me today in the studio uh, City Councilor Dennis Aneri, a good Democrat, someone I've known for a long time. Welcome, thank Dennis. You, thank you, Mark. Thank Thanks you. for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Um, 32 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Pretty close, right? Yes. Okay, school yes. committee for 20. School committee for 20. Ward 5. Ward 5, and then city councilor for the last 12 years, Ward 3. Mm -hmm. uh, little interim break from school committee to city council, but still always involved and uh, was always a part of the political process even when I was on a little three, four year hiatus. And um, matter of fact, um, you, you mentioned, um, you know, here we are, democratically speaking, democratic, you know, program. And the first time I ran for political office, um, believe it or not, it was based upon Democrat and Republican. Mm -hmm. When I ran back in 1977, I ran with uh, George Lamassa, who was the uh, uh, sitting uh, incumbent uh, school committee member from Ward 5, and uh, it was he and I and three other people, um, to be truthful with you, that, that ran. Uh, uh, since uh, one has passed, uh, Phil Saber, I'm sure you remember that name sure from the do. east side, Phil mm -hmm. Saber. Uh, and I'm trying to even think uh, a couple other, uh, there was another gentleman, younger gentleman, his name was McEachran, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, neighborhood boy um, on Jacob Street, I remember that part. And uh, Brian O'Leary, who was at Massasoit College for a good many years. I remember that name very yep. well. Yep, and uh, it was uh, Democrat, Republican, and um, Mr. Lamasa won. And then he faced off with the Republican candidate then was Mr. Joseph Adams, mm -hmm. who lived up uh, right up uh, off of um, uh, Crescent Street. I even forget that. I think it was Bishop Street, one of those streets there uh, that he lived in. But still, it was Democrat, Republican. And then the next time when I ran in 1979, it was now nonpartisan. The nonpartisan piece was voted in at that election that political uh, process in the city would be known as nonpartisan. And then um, when I ran in 1979, I ran uh, head-to-head -head with Mr. Lamassa, and I, and I won two to one. So that was the beginning. And, and you uh, ran against Mr. Democrat at one point. I remember that exactly breakfast that we just recently right. had. Exactly Red right. Sullivan, exactly who right. you're still friends with. We're still friends. And, and I, back in the day, it was Rockham Sockham, yep, though, I'm sure. Matter of fact, I went into uh, office in 1980, uh, school committee, and then in 1981, re-election, uh, goes by fast, and uh, uh, I was unopposed, and then in 1983, I had uh, Paul Sullivan as my opposition, and uh, uh, myself, I was, for whatever reason, a little laxed, I don't know why, young guy, I mean, you know, could run up and down every hill and every mountain and every three tenement home, but for whatever reason, I was a little laxed, and a uh, very interesting race that year with... Uh, uh, Councillor Burgess and, and Dave Spillane, mm -hmm. two great people from uh, you know Ward Five. But in any case, um, Mr. Sullivan ran against me, and uh, he uh, he came very close, and um, very very close. And you heard me mention it at breakfast when he tried it. We always give uh, each other a little rib to to something. Uh, I think he called me older, and and I indicated, but you never came back and ran against me. And and he will shake his head and say, No, I never did. But uh, Paul's a great Democrat, great friend, and we became the best of friends because he was second vice chair, uh, first vice chair, I believe, under Councilor Studinsky when, uh, when he was chairman of the Democratic City right. Committee. Um, and I was treasurer, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Doris Captainbone who was secretary. You got it. You got it. What's the word you term with dating ourselves? I think so. I, know. I think so. But you know I, I got involved young, and you got involved. I was 14 I years old in Brockton and when Jimmy Carter came to Brockton High and spoke, and that was the first campaign I got I, involved with, and then I took the action I, politics class 1976 with Marge Donovan, who was the teachers union president sure. before she was, she was teaching, and we had a requirement that we had to work on all the campaigns in 1976. Yeah. So that's how I got started. And Red yeah. Sullivan's the one that ran the headquarters. Yeah. And look at and, and look at how young you were then, because mm -hmm. I really started, believe it or not, in 1972 when my godfather, who was my father's first cousin, and we used to call him Uncle, his mm -hmm. name was Ralph Ruggiero. First oh, ramp yeah. for Sheriff of Sheriff. Plymouth County against Linwood H. Snow. Mm -hmm. And he ran in 1972 and 1974. He ran in 72 because Linwood Snow had, had been appointed to take all, over the office of Sheriff when Sheriff Hollow retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very, that's how I started. I started playing politics with, with him, and he had it in his blood. And one of his best of friends was Francis X. Bellotti. They were mm -hmm. the best of friends uh, in, in those days. Anna Buckley, all those people. So... I go back, uh, you know, John Sullivan was mayor, you know what I mean? I, it's just amazing, um, you know, uh, I don't know if some people like to hear all that history and, 
and I've served under how many mayors since David Crosby um, right up now to even uh, Mayor Carpenter. Um, you know, so how many mayors uh, have I been involved with? It, it's, a, it's, it's a number of mayors, you know what I'm saying? And, the, the thing uh, I most remember is uh, during the selection process for superintendent of schools back in, it might have been 83, if I'm not mistaken, Matt Manthala George, correct, Matt George. Correct. And you, I was, we were covering the deliberations when I first worked for cable, Continental Cable at the time, correct. on the selection of the superintendent of schools. Mm. And you were on the school committee at that point. See, I, I was familiar with the school committee because I was the student rep for three years. Right, right. Okay, I was the Azure building rep to the school committee. Yeah. And the school committee used to listen to us. If we had an mm -hmm. idea or a policy change, we didn't have a vote. And, and I'm on a school committee now, and we have a student rep. So it's nice to see that. That's always what got nice. me involved. Yeah, always was nice to see a student rep there or one or two there. We always had that. And, and, and I, I remember when you were there as, as well. And I remember some of the other reps. And, and you've often heard, uh, in, and he's a good person, you've heard Jake, Jacob Tagger mention my name a part of because he was a student rep in the early 90s mm -hmm. when I was on, on the Brockton School Committee. And uh, very appreciative to have him there. You know what I mean? All part of that part of that process. That was an interesting school committee. Yes. Uh, Bill Vass, yes. uh, Richard Sullivan, Sullivan yeah. Sonny Goss. Sonny Goss. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I came on right after they they were leaving. Well, no, Dick Sullivan was still with me. Dick yep. Sullivan was still with me. I came on. Ray Gillette came on. Ann McCormick came on. Mm -hmm. um, we had some uh, new faces. Another gentleman from Ward 1, uh, attorney Paul Sullivan. Only one term, though. He, he did one term. Right. Because Paul Arnone had, was leaving at that he time. Went he, became council. Council. he became yeah. a counsel. He became a counsel. Yeah. So, I mean, it... Uh, it goes back, I mean, uh, and you talk about, um, you know, the superintendent's position back then, and, and, and Matt George was, was vying for the seat because uh, um, Tom Whalen, Dr. Tom Whalen, was retiring. And right. Matt, a Brockton boy, east side boy, um, and I just saw Matt a few weeks ago, we were having a conversation, and uh, it brings you back, it really, it really does, to uh, know that there we were during difficult times. They, they were in easy times. Right. You know, people think oh, student they were... protests on City Hall oh, when Paul Stanensky was the mayor uh, after the two and a half override. Absolutely. I remember all that. I couldn't even escape it. I went to Florida. I went to University of Miami and my Tough mother times. was sending the clippings out of the Enterprise down to me and there was, there was the, the, the 81 election yep. with the one vote. Um, I'll never forget former Mayor Crosby was still sitting in the chair when I got back on a break. Exactly. He, he says, you did this to me. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, did you vote absentee like I told you to do? I said, of course I did. Yeah, he said, who'd yeah. you vote for? I said, you taught me never to tell you who I voted yeah, for. Yeah. Okay, but it was a one-vote election, it and then it, it was contested, it was. and they had another election. Yeah. So you must love it, Dennis, to be in it this long. I know there are trying times both budgetary and, there are. and politically. There are. And Why you, do you do it? And you know, because you just, you just said it, because I like it. I, I, it's part of my life. I've done it all my life. And, and, you know, I'm no different than anybody else that's served. I mean, we all work full-time jobs. You know, there, there are a few that, that either were semi-retired or retirement was, you know, part of their process and they were able to do it. Um, you know, you've heard Councilor Dinapoli say, well, I've done this full-time. Well, he he did do it somewhat full time because he was retired. He could get out there and do a little bit more than the rest of us. But we always say we're doing our job as well. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that, um, you know, when they take on the thrust of the fact that they want to serve the city, it's time consuming. And I guess one fortunate thing that I've had, maybe it isn't, I don't know, I didn't have the family aspect of it. Yeah, I had parents, great parents, and, and they were they were my supporters with my, my sister as well and, 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 and her kids too, you know. But I didn't have the other piece of it, you know what I mean, Mark? Mm -hmm. the, the wife, the children, you know, the things that you had to go off and do today. And I watched some of our counselors saddle that and straddle that. But, but they keep doing it. Why? Because they like doing it. And, and we like the city. Um, I've been here going on 62 years of my life. I've worked here all my entire life, maybe for a few years when I worked at Plymouth, at the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, or a couple of years in Boston. But I still, where did I come home to at night? Brockton. I came right home to Brockton, went to a meeting and laid my head down and did my job the next day. But, um, you know, I, I've, always in, I've always enjoyed being a part of the, part of the process. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you, you say to yourself, what am I doing? You know, uh, and times are still, times today aren't that different than they were 15 or 20 years ago. We're still under financial constraints. And I always say, proposition two and a half it hurt this community, it hurt the state, but it hurt this community. We, we never rebound. We did to a point. And how proud I am to know that as a school community member, even as a city councilor, we built new schools. 
We built three new schools under when I was a school committee member and put three others on the docket. You know, Wynn Fowl, um, uh, Matt George, and, and even Bob Jones, you know what I mean? Um, Joe Beige was superintendent after that. Um, you know, in, in, in different mayors, Jack Units, you know what I mean? We've been able to move the city forward, and every time we get going, it seems like we go back again for whatever reason. Three the economy, steps forward, two steps the back. Economy, the economy hurt everybody in the last few years, and even uh, business, and I mean, even car business got hurt. You know, everyone's been hurt by that. And I still think you're grasping each and every day to still come out of that. Um, but, hey, I, you know, I like it, and uh, I guess that's why I'm a candidate for re-election, uh, because I like it, and I like serving the people of Ward 3, and, and I hope that uh, I, I think I've worked to my best, to my ability to serve them. Uh, we don't all agree on some of the issues, and, and I know that. That's why I have ward meetings. Let the people come forth, and, and believe me, they come, and there's some people that will... Not, not beat me up, but they have their comment to be made, and that's fine. Now, that's every two years, there's an election, yeah. okay? And that's the voter referendum. If, if people like who's serving them, they keep them, and if they don't, exactly. they change. You do have an opponent in this election cycle. Correct. Um, differ your, differentiate yourself between your opponent. Um, you're, you're, you're a very cordial man. You had a very respectful debate, which we'll have on cable, and, and people can look and mm -hmm. obviously compare and contrast. What's the difference? It's experience. I think you, you kind of summed it up in your closing statement. I, I, I think that is the key factor there is the experience that I have, um, um, the qualifications that, that make me uh, to have served as a city councilor because of the years I had even as a school committee member. I understood early on the budgetary process. Remember, the school department, what is it? It's your largest department. You have a $384 million budget and about $164 million of that money is what? School department. So there alone, you know, when I transferred into being a city councilor, I had that experience and that expertise, as well as I knew people from, from being on the school committee, that process to when I went to the city level, to knowing who I could work with and who, who would work with me and to get things done. I think, you know, I welcome the fact that there's an opponent. That's fine by me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm older now, I'm older too, mm -hmm. um, but at the same token, I don't shy if somebody wants to be my opponent. That's fine. That they have every right to be. It's, it's, as we say, the democratic process. It really is. Let people run, let their voice be heard as well. Um, but I think what differentiates us is the fact that I've been there for 12 years. People know who I am. They, they, know, they know that I'm, I'm, I'm working for them. They know that if they call me, I'm going to do my best to get something done, whether it be a one-way street, that they, they, uh, a, a two-way street made into a one-way or a new stop sign, or we have a problem with, with traffic on, on a street. If we have any other types of situations, uh, crime involved in the, in, in the ward, and, and believe me right now, we're dealing with public safety issues each and every single day. I think that's what's most important. Um, as as I said to you, I hold ward meetings, and I've been doing that since I took office uh, 12 years ago. In Every my estimation, months. you do a lot of ward meetings. So does Councilor Monahan. Mm. Um, some people don't choose to do that, mm. and 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 you think I know you think it's important. I know you've always made sure that you let us know when they were, so we could publicize them as well. Because exactly. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's like we were talking before on the on a break. It's not all social media. Right. People get their information on a variety of sources. They get it on the web, but you get it in person. Exactly. It's like you people can't go to the city council. They can go to the city council meeting and attend it. Right. But they can't speak at a city council meeting. The only time they can speak is when they're invited to appear at a finance committee meeting. So this is interactive. When you have a ward meeting and you bring in people from out, you know, the different experts, whether it be crime, police, education, whatever, they can have a conversation with you and ask questions. Absolutely, and I, and I think that's what's always been my goal is to is to be there to be able to present them even some other department heads that they'd like to meet. And uh, I'm in the process right now, Mark, of setting up a ward meeting for two weeks from uh, today, which will be October. 27th at mm -hmm. the Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. I have I have already uh, reserved the building and I will be uh, setting that up within the next few weeks and uh, piecing that all together with a couple of guests and, and I will be present um, and as always it's always great to bring some light refreshments because that that entertains people while they're there as well and um, you know I I, I think um, even even with um, with the ward meetings uh, you know and, and with the people that I have there 
Uh, they sometimes want to ask different questions about, you know, I had a few weeks ago, a few months ago, the DPW commissioner, brand new, never been introduced, and, and they want to ask him some different questions. Same as um, I always have Officer Healy, mm -hmm. you know, Crime Watch Coordinator, president at, at those meetings as well. You mentioned uh, Chief Crowley. I already had Chief Crowley. He was present. I already had Fire Chief Williams. He was present. So it brings in people into the ward so that they can interact as well. And at the end, I leave it open for an open session in regards to anything you have about, about me or any questions you have. And believe me, people were asking me questions at, at, my, at, at my last one about, uh, uh, you know, the casino, naturally. They, were, they were, had their concerns, and we, and we vented it, and we, we talked it. No one went away mad. Everyone just went away with their thoughts and theories, and they wanted to let their minds be known to whether they were for or against. Same way with other issues that, that maybe are something transpiring in, in Ward 3. But I also present things to them of what I'm doing, which I do right at the beginning of, of each meeting, give them a little highlight of what, what's going on in Ward 3. So, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's a key ingredient. Some councils, you say, you're right. They don't have them because they feel like they're entertaining sometimes the same people. That can be true. Maybe there's more civility and cordiality in three. I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> it, it depends on where you're going. Yeah. Because I've attended them across the city. I know some of the councilors at large join you. But they do. The Council at large do. And, and, and I've even had some of the other ward councilors. They'll come in as well and, the, and they'll come by and, and uh, want to be introduced. And I introduce them as well and they want to say a few words. So, I mean, uh, basically... Uh, I try to get as many people there, and, and you know, yeah, you see some of the same people, but you get some new people as well, and that's what's, that's what's interesting to me. And you know something, I do it the old-fashioned way. I draft up a flyer, and I mail out about 60, 70 flyers to homes, you know, the old-fashioned way with a quick note, hope all is well, hope I'll see you at the next meeting, invite your friends. I do it the old-fashioned way. I don't, I will go on and post here, but I still think when you sit down and do things the old-fashioned way, it still works. It still works. So, um, you know, those are the things I'm going to keep doing. I'm, I'm, I'm not changing my tone, um, you know, when I'm reelected, and hopefully I will be reelected. There's still work left to do. I've got things to do in Ward 3, and uh, I hope that the people uh, see clearly that uh, I've, I've done the best of my ability. Yeah, some phone calls do get, what do I, I always say, caught somewhere in the crack, or you get back to them, and they don't get back to you, and you don't get back. That happens sometimes, because believe it or not, and some of these other people running for office don't realize, not only do you get phone calls here on this, you also get phone calls on the landline. And I have a landline. Some, some do not. I have a landline. And it's on Channel 12. If That's anybody exactly wants right. to get a hold of you, we have all the numbers posted for all the counselors. That's it's exactly on the city right. website. It's on our website. Yep. Um, and it's important. Issues that are going on. Um, certain things you've been very consistent on with issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, You're in Ward 3. Ward 3 is adjacent to Ward 4, exactly. where the proposed power plant is. Mm -hmm. Your position on that, clearly. Clearly opposed. I have been. I will never change my tone on that. Um, and as you know, we're uh, still in litigation with that situation. Yes, the mayor has signed a, uh, an agreement uh, for him to do some other things with it, um, but in any case, um, we still see it as it still has to come before the city council because you're still dealing with and faced with the fact of the water issue in itself. But um, we're still in court, and so I don't say too much about it because I don't want to say the wrong things and somebody take it and say, oh, I heard what he said on TV. No. So that's why I leave it as best as I can, and especially serving as city council president. I tell my colleagues, be careful um, of what you're talking about if you have to go out and talk about the power plant. As they would say on the street, anything you say can and will be used against, against you, you in exactly. a different way. Exactly. You also have the water sale as part of that to, exactly. to deal with and contend with. You get the desal. Yeah. Okay. What do, you, what do you see with the desalination? I, I, you know, the desalination plant, I mean, the mayor has his thoughts on that, and we're still waiting for some information that's supposed to be coming back to the Water Commission and through his office, then it will come forth to the City Council. Um, you know, yes, it's been floated out there, yes. We've had uh, discussions just in groups, not really discussions on the City Council floor in regards to that. Uh, I don't foresee myself supporting something like that. I, I really don't. I mean, you know, $88 million, and then by the time you look at what the plant may need for, for renovations and restoration and, and those types of things, you could be up to $110 million. I mean, who's paying for that? The taxpayer. That's the whole problem we have with the situation with the Queria and not coming before us when we're trying to ask them and get information. 
Um, that's one of the reasons why we held up their uh, piece of the pie this year in the budget, which is $6.3 million. And at some point, that, that itself is going to grow to be 9 to $10 million taxpayer money as well. And uh, as I mentioned before in other, other shows, I think I mentioned the debate, still, still can't understand why a city council back then gave up their authority to sign off and never have a say in a contract for 20 years in regards to that facility. I mean, I just, why, why it ever went that way, I don't know, because it shouldn't have been that way. They should have been coming back every two or three years and telling us, here's where we're at, this is what we're trying to do, we're trying to make agreements here, we're trying to do it. Who, who's the buyer right now? Brockton. It seems I mean, like, it's crazy. It seems like everything old is new again. If you really think about it, going back to the beginning of our conversation at this, it, it, during this interview. Yes. You've seen it all because you've been around for quite a while. The issues keep reoccurring. They do. It's like, and, and some might say it could be a reoccurring nightmare. They do. Okay. They do. You know, D cell's been around. That started under Mayor Units. Yeah. I mean, we're talking three mayors ago already. Four started, mayors it's, ago. It started under in 1999. To be truthful, with you, the first discussions of it, and then it came back out in 2005 or six, I believe it was, when I first went went on to the city council, and it was just a couple years after the whole um, contract got signed with Aquaria for the desalination plant before we even turned the switch on. And I got the switch in Ward 3, so, I mean, it's right up on, on Pearl Street. But, um, you know, I, I ran into a constituent the other day and said, you know, if they're that interested in building the power plant, then tell them to buy, buy the desalination plant as well. He says, what a nice chunk of money that would be coming back to the taxpayer. The person's right, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, not all off base. What a nice chunk of money. Because look at what you're spending each year. And, and let alone, I mean, I know the mayor's looking at it for his agreement of, of, of you know, what he can get every two or three million dollars every year. So that's chump change. What's that going to pay for? Half a contract for a department or something? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what's it going to do for us? Uh, I, I mean, I just, to me, I, I just always think it's been a, you know, been a long gone forgotten soldier, but... You get reelected. What are your top priorities? What are the things that you want to do for your residents in Ward 3? And even though you're just a, well, I shouldn't say just a ward council, but you're one of 11. Absolutely. Just because there are issues that are specific to your ward, a lot of the issues are specific to the whole city. To the whole, as whole. City. What do you want to get accomplished? What What would be your goals? Well, I, I, I think the one goal that uh, I think we all have, and we, we wrestle with it each and every day, and that's public safety. I, I want safety, security uh, for the people in Ward 3, definitely for the children in, in my schools, you know, the Huntington School, South Middle School, Kennedy School, those are the schools that I have in, in, my, in my district, even though the other children come from other areas to go into those, to those buildings as well. Um, I, I want safe streets. I, I really, really do. I want to see more men and women on the street patrolling our neighborhoods. I, I want that. That's, that's the top number one goal. Um, my second goal naturally will be to continue to represent the people of Ward 3 to the best of my ability. I will continue to work feverishly the best that I can to get some of our uh, non-accepted streets accepted so that at some point I can get them repaved. I've got a lot of streets repaved over my years as being a council and I'm very proud of that. Um, just got through doing Linwood Street not too long ago. South Street, historic district is being done right now as we speak. It's being done right now. New street, new sidewalks with the parking lot right next to it, adjacent to it. Uh, the parking authority has taken over control of that. I asked the mayor to give that to them, mm -hmm. and he's worked with me on that. They've repaved that great touch for, for Camp Powell. Unfortunately, I have to say how we had to have you know, a fire situation down there just last week, so it's, it's put one of our businesses out of place. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the cafe that was there, a tremendous business, and I feel sorry for, the, for them. I really do. Um, but we got a great little town there. Um, the, other, the other thing I want to do is just to continue um, to, you know, to stay in touch with, with my people and do whatever I, I have to do to make sure that you know, they understand everything. Continue, as I've said before, continue with my ward meetings. Um, be a part of that whole have them be a part of that whole process with me. Uh, and, and I attend many meetings within the area, uh, Parent Advisory Council meetings at the Huntington, Parent Advisory Council meetings at the Kennedy, uh, Camp Hello Businessmen's Association I'm a member of, uh, represent, representing Champion Lincoln. So, um, you know, all that, uh, those things I'm just gonna, I'm gonna continue to do. I don't know of any other, other way to do it other than just to be available to my people. All that and having to run Every two years, you have to run every two years. Exactly. Um, 
Question for you. Any thoughts that you have? I, I got the five minute sign, so we got about five minutes, and okay. I want to allow you a closing statement, talk directly sure. to the voters in your ward. Um, the term, uh, government studies, been proposed. I know Councilor Stewart did that. I, I, mm -hmm. I know Councilor Barnes has been talking about it too. We had at one point in time, four year term for mayor. Correct. And then people didn't like the mayor at the time and changed it back to two. Any thoughts on that? Any 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 thoughts you have having been in it for so long? I thought you were asking me my thoughts of running for mayor at some point in time. But I, I didn't want to do that because we're talking about running for re-election. You can volunteer the information <laughs> if you want. <laughs> in, in, in any case, um, Mark, I think um, I think we've come to the time again when we do need a four-year term for mayor. I really do, um, and, and it doesn't matter who the mayor may be. I think it's not fair to that person who comes in with a new agenda to try to set forth and try to get some of the goals taken because it, it, it happens so so fast. And, and you're right, I think uh, Kyle Patel had a four-year term as mayor. He had, the la he had his last term was a four-year, and then when Mayor Fowler was elected through that race with, with the city clerk Lyons, um, it was on the ballot to return it back to a two-year, but not until the next mayoral race, and, and then Mayor Fowler had the, la the last of the four-year, and then it went back to two-year for, for Jack Eunice to have to run every two years as well. Um, but I think city council um, and school committee, I don't have a problem with, with the two-year. Um, I, I think if you're doing your job and you're doing it well, uh, you, you're going to be able to continue to be re-elected. Uh, if somebody comes out to run, that's okay, because you know what that does? It does what we're doing right now. It allows me to come out and speak. If I had no opponent, then where would I be right now? I'd, I'd just be home doing something else. Sure, putting out a few signs and saying hello to some people, but not out there really aggressively saying who and what I am and what I'm all about and what I feel I can still continue to do here in the city of Brockton, the city that I was born in, to be truthful with you. So I think that alone could stay where it is, but I'm, I'm not opposed to the fact that you know if we went to a mayoral uh, uh, you know, I may have been a, a four-year term. I, I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. Okay, we'll we'll tackle the mayor question another time. Um, <laughs> I'd like to give you an opportunity to talk sure. directly to your voters, your constituents, in Ward Three. And, and, and thank you, Mark. I appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on today. I really, really do. And I just want to take a quick second to uh, uh, again thank the people of Ward Three for allowing me to serve uh, as your city council for the past uh, 12 years. I think the hallmarks of my uh, service has been my availability to you and to perform my duties for you. Um, as a ward councillor, and you know the ward councillor is um, also uh, I know sometimes as the, as the mayor of uh, of the mayor of their uh, little nest of, of being uh, you know in, in that ward. But um, I'm going to continue to work in, in your best interest and do everything that uh, I think is is right for for you. And uh, as you heard me mention, uh, public safety is the top of my agenda, and I'm I'm going to continue to to fight that with my other councillors and with the mayor and with the chief of police and and make sure that our men and women who are doing a fine job are out there uh, with the right equipment to fight what we, uh, what we have to do to combat some of the problems that we've had uh, recently. With that being said, I ask for your vote uh, uh, on November the 3rd to re-elect me, uh, Dennis Aneary, uh, City Council Ward 3, and uh, I won't let you down. I'll continue to work in my best interest uh, for you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for being on, Councillor. Thank you. And good luck. Appreciate you're, it. You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates in the upcoming November 3rd election uh, that are running for office. Uh, everybody will be on TV, debates, forums, candidates nights, everything like that. Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching Democratically Speaking.